Infrastructure, it's the backbone of modern society, but even the most well-intentioned projects can sometimes go awry. From colossal engineering fails to misguided urban planning, these failures remind us of the critical importance of careful and well-informed decision-making when it comes to building our infrastructure. Here are the top 15 worst infrastructure mistakes in history. Let's start with number 15, the Millennium Bridge in London. The Millennium Bridge, officially known as the London Millennium Footbridge, initially appeared as a landmark steel suspension bridge in London, England, connecting the Bankside with the City of London. However, it quickly gained infamy as the Wobbly Bridge after its first day, revealing an alarming swaying motion. It prompted closures, extensive modifications, and two years of repairs to ensure it regained stability. So what gave the bridge this sway? Well, its swaying movements stem from a positive feedback phenomenon. It's identified as synchronous lateral excitation, which led pedestrians to inadvertently synchronize their steps with the bridge's lateral motion. It's as simple as it is extraordinary. On its opening day, an estimated 90,000 people crossed the bridge, with up to 2,000 individuals present on the structure simultaneously, resulting in a maximum sway of about 2.8 inches. Now, to fix this sway, the bridge's original designers had to stiffen it and alter the resonant frequency. The only problem was that it would change the bridge's appearance. 37 dampers were built into the new bridge, fixing the issue. But the name Wobbly Bridge stuck. Number 14. Pier 1 Playground if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the playground. Well, when a new playground opened in Brooklyn's Pier 1 in 2010, parents were ecstatic to give their little kids a new place to hang. That is, until one hot New York day that ruined it all. The park's metal play domes posed a serious risk through their extreme heat, giving kids a little more heat than they bargained for. Attempts to mitigate this issue, such as using festival tents, proved ineffective as the structure's surfaces only got hotter. No matter how much shade the city tried throwing at it, the park still stung those little hands and feet, until eventually New York park officials covered those heat domes with white tarps and barricades, effectively taking them out of use. Jeffrey Croft from the nonprofit group New York City Park Advocates criticized the lack of testing before installing the domes, emphasizing that such accidents could have been prevented. These metal domes were part of a design by landscape architect Michael Van Valkenburg, who also created a similar but larger structure called the Mountain in Union Square Park. Although the Union Square Park dome faced similar heating issues, the Parks Department decided to cover it permanently with a shaded structure, opting not to remove it. All it came down to was some poor city planning. It sounds like the designers don't have kids. Number 13. Dubai Aquarium Leak Dubai, known for its larger-than-life structures and luxurious attractions, encountered a thrilling yet concerning incident at the Grand Dubai Mall, home to the Middle East's largest shopping center. Maintenance crews were sent into a frenzy as a dramatic leak caught on camera emerged from an immense shark-filled aquarium, causing part of the mall to be swiftly evacuated. In this digital age, plenty of onlookers whipped out their phones to capture this wet incident, showing off a deluge of water gushing into the mall's gleaming floors from the 2.6 million gallon tank. Visitors were barred from the scene as the water surged unexpectedly from the 75 centimeter thick viewing panel, creating quite the spectacle. A spokesperson from the Dubai Civil Defense Department was quick to remind the world that this was a leak and not a crack. Does that make much difference to the public? No, not likely, because the thought of a massive shark having free range of the hotel lobby isn't so easily put at ease. This aquarium boasts the world's largest acrylic viewing panel and 2.6 million gallons of water. It isn't just a drop in the pond. Luckily though, both the humans and the marine life who called the tank home were A-OK. -okay. But with that said, the incident did trigger a growing number of concerns about structural safety in the bustling city-state, which is full of brand new infrastructure that, in the long run, seemingly popped up overnight. Number 12. The Leading Tower of Bologna The Esenelli Tower and the Garrisenda Tower are the two iconic leaning towers located in Bologna, Italy. While the Leaning Tower of Pisa is more widely known, the towers in Bologna also have distinct tilt that makes them a popular tourist attraction. These towers were constructed in the 12th century by prominent Bolognese families, and they served as symbols of power and prestige. Over the centuries, the towers have leaned more noticeably due to various factors, including the soft ground and the tower's considerable height and weight. So what does that mean for the future of this leaning tower? Well, the tower's precarious state has sparked fears of a potential collapse and raised alarms about the safety risks it poses to surroundings. 
Notably, in addition to its pronounced lean, the tower also experiences torsional movement, amplifying these concerns surrounding its stability. That's not to say that it's going to topple over anytime soon, but that hasn't stopped the local government from taking certain precautions. The mayor of Bologna tasked researchers and engineers with miking up the leaning towers. Acoustic sensors were placed around the towers in 2023, so that not even the faintest creak or crack would go under the radar. Even a pendulum was put in to track the movement. Is it just a bunch of Bologna? No, it's the Leaning Tower of Bologna. Number 11. The Ghost Cities of China Venture beyond the bustling streets of Shanghai and Beijing and you'll encounter an unusual sight, towering modern cities that are eerily devoid of life. Welcome to China's Ghost Cities. These ghostly urban landscapes have garnered considerable attention, with their existence serving as a testament to China's heavy reliance on the real estate sector. As the global spotlight shines on Evergrande's staggering $300 billion debt, the significance of these ghost cities has surged. Yet still, pinning down their precise numbers remains a daunting task. Take for example Ordos New Town, also known as Kangbashi in Inner Mongolia, China's most iconic ghost city. It was originally designed to accommodate a million people. Now the town hosts a mere fraction of that number. An exploration of these ghost cities by photographer Kai Kemmerer portrays row after row of empty high-rises, reminiscent of lockdown cities during the height of the pandemic. These unoccupied structures contribute significantly to China's colossal housing market, dwarfing the U.S. residential market with a staggering $52 trillion value. However, unlike traditional ghost towns, these Chinese counterparts aren't abandoned. They remain unoccupied investments, illustrating the disparity between supply and demand. China's culture of real estate investments has further fueled this trend. The country's home ownership rates surpassed 90%, with over 20% of homeowners owning more than one property. Consequently, the demand for housing units has been impacted by various factors, including soaring prices, an aging population, and slowing growth. While the specter of the Evergrande crisis looms, China has implemented stringent measures to curtail these risks, including restricting home sales. Nevertheless, concerns persist, especially for households heavily reliant on real estate as a source of wealth. This crisis also poses a broader economic risk, with the potential to reverberate across the real estate sector and the overall Chinese economy. Number 10. The London Big Stink of 1858 The Big Stink of 1858 was not just a run-of-the-mill, foul-smelling situation. It was the granddaddy of all putrid predicaments, a malodorous spectacle that put the pungency of a thousand ripe cheeses to shame. Imagine this, a scorching summer, the scenic River Thames lazily meandering through the city, and suddenly, a noxious cloud of untreated sewage and industrial waste decides to crash the party. It was a scent so ghastly it would wilt flowers and bring tears to even the most hardened of eyes. As the heat soared, so did this fragrant nightmare, seeping its way into the very heart of the British governance, the Houses of Parliament. The honorable members of Parliament found themselves in the unenviable position of debating weighty matters of state with the pungent aroma of raw sewage enveloping them like an unwanted, overly affectionate relative. Rumor has it that some resourceful politicians resorted to aromatic handkerchiefs and sprigs of lavender tucked strategically in their lapels, attempting to ward off this olfactory assault with a touch of Victorian panache. Luckily, in the face of this aromatic Armageddon arose a hero, Joseph Bazalget. His ingenious sewer network, completed in the 1860s, was the knight in shining armor London desperately needed, vanquishing this putrid scourge that had plagued the city for far too long. Never again would the Thames be the unwitting host of a ghastly sewage soiree. The Big Stink, for all its fetid notoriety, ultimately became the catalyst for a revolution in urban planning and public health, proving that even the foulest of fumes can lead to a fragrant victory. So, here's to Basil Gett, the unsung hero of London's Big Stink, and to the sweet smell of success that followed in its wake. Number 9. Olympic Stadium, Montreal the anticipation before any global sporting spectacle is a nerve-wracking experience. Helicopters hover overhead, athletes fidget with excitement, and organizers nervously watch over the proceedings, hoping nothing goes wrong despite years of preparation and exorbitant expenses. Then, with a flourish of trumpets and vibrant spectacles, the games kick off in all their glory. However, in 1976, Montreal introduced a curious twist to this time-honored tradition. During the Grand Parade of Nations, Greek athletes encountered a hurdle of a different kind. 
behind-the-scenes construction workers scrambled to clear debris, working frantically to prepare the stadium for the event. The monumental effort to complete the facility in time saw 3,000 laborers toiling round the clock in frantic months leading up to the games. Their last-minute heroics narrowly saved the day. Yet as the excitement of the game subsided, Montreal faced a different kind of hangover, one of financial distress, scandal, and the legacy of an overambitious stadium. The city struggled to shake off the consequences, grappling with the economic decline and social unrest. Prior to the Olympics, Montreal exuded an air of sophistication and cultural richness, a cosmopolitan haven that was the envy of its rival, Toronto. The city boasted a vibrant cultural scene, nurturing the likes of Leonard Cohen and other luminaries in arts and politics. However, the Olympic debts lingered, creating a financial strain that persisted for three decades. Mismanagement, political scandals, and construction chaos plagued the Olympic legacy. The retractable roof, intended as a marvel of engineering, faced continuous malfunctions and frequent replacements, contributing to the stadium's persistent issues. Nowadays, the place is falling apart, totally dilapidated. Not only is the stadium. Number 8. New York City The Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, no matter what you wish to call it, it's one of the greatest cities in the world. But it's also proving to be one massive infrastructure nightmare. What's going on? Well, simply put, New York City is New York sinking, and there doesn't seem to be either a solution or an end in sight. Recent studies have unearthed some pretty alarming revelations, shedding light on the city's gradual descent into the earth. A consequence of its burgeoning architectural might, with the sea level rising at an alarming rate, the Big Apple faces an existential threat, compounded by the unsettling impact of extreme weather events triggered by the relentless march of the climate crisis. Researcher and geophysicist Tom Parsons has most recently noted that the Big Apple isn't teetering on the brink of an oceanic invasion just yet. However, the data speaks for itself, with recent hurricane events and heavy downpours hinting at the vulnerability of this concrete jungle. Parsons and his team meticulously weighed the colossal mass of the city's buildings, discovering that they tipped the scales at a mind-boggling 1.68 trillion pounds. The impact of this mammoth weight isn't just some boring statistic. It's causing the ground beneath the city to sink at an average of 1 to 2 millimeters a year, with some areas experiencing subsidence up to a staggering 4.5 millimeters annually. Now, this phenomenon is known as subsidence. It's a product of various factors, from construction on soft soils to the remnants of the last ice age and groundwater pumping. Although some parts of New York are sinking due to ongoing construction projects, there are perplexing pockets of subsidence that defy explanation, leaving experts like Parsons scratching their heads. Lower Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens are among some of the areas sinking at an accelerated rate. Moving on to number 7, the babies of Zhishkov Tower. The Zhishkov Tower in Prague, known for its imposing presence on the city skyline, is not just a hub for panoramic views, but also a host to a hilarious and quirky surprise, the infamous Babies of Zhishkov Tower. Crafted in the year 2000 by the Czech sculptor David Czerny, these larger-than-life crawling infants have tickled the funny bones of locals and tourists, injecting a delightful dose of absurdity into the urban infrastructure. Originally, the installation was intended as a temporary exhibit for the Zhishkov Television Tower, a controversial architectural landmark in Prague. However, the endearing and humorous nature of the sculptures has captured the hearts of locals, leading to their permanent installation on the tower. The tower itself was constructed between 1985 and 1992, during the communist era in the Czech Republic, and was met with mixed reactions due to its unconventional design, which deviated from the historical architecture of the city. Simply put, the Zhishkov Tower on its own doesn't quite fit in. Thankfully, the babies bring a little life to this tower. These mischievous little tykes with their exaggerated facial features and playful postures seem to be on a perpetual mission to conquer the tower. With their oversized heads and comically contorted limbs, they exude a whimsical charm that's impossible to ignore. The sight of these chubby-cheeked climbers seemingly engaged in a race to the top never fails to elicit laughter and joy from onlookers. The juxtaposition of the tower's stark, modern design and the cheeky, light-hearted nature of the crawling babies is nothing short of comedic genius. The contrast adds a refreshing and unexpected layer of amusement to an otherwise ordinary setting. Tourists often find themselves unable to resist the urge to snap a selfie with these playful sculptures, while the locals take pride in the fact that their city embraces such delightful eccentricities. Number 6. The Norman Foster Hotel 
In Las Vegas, the city known for its opulent and grandiose architecture, one peculiar structure stands out for its enigmatic state, the abandoned, half-built hotel designed by renowned British architect Norman Foster. The development, initially titled the Harmon Hotel, was meant to be a stunning addition to the vibrant skyline. However, due to a series of complications and legal disputes, the project remains frozen in time, offering a striking and eerie glimpse into the world of unrealized architectural ambitions. The tale of the Harmon Hotel begins in the early 2000s, when Foster & Partners, the firm led by the esteemed architect Norman Foster, was commissioned to design a 49-story luxury hotel as part of the ambitious city center development on the Las Vegas Strip. With its sleek and contemporary design, the Harmon Hotel was envisioned to be the crown jewel of the area. However, as construction progressed, critical flaws in the building's structure were discovered, prompting a legal battle between the developer MGM Resorts International and the construction company, resulting in a decision to halt the project in 2008. The revelation of construction defects raised concerns about the safety and stability of the building, leading to an extensive investigation and subsequent legal disputes over responsibility and liability. While some sections of the hotel were later dismantled, the remaining structure, a 27-story concrete skeleton, still looms over the Las Vegas skyline, serving as a reminder of the complexities and challenges inherent in large-scale endeavors. Foster's vision, once intended to symbolize the epitome of luxury and innovation, now stands as a cautionary tale, illustrating the potential pitfalls of ambitious architectural projects in an ever-evolving urban landscape. At the end of the day, this abandoned hotel has garnered attention for all the wrong reasons and stands as one of the silliest infrastructure mistakes around. Number 5. Astoria Borealis In the heart of Astoria, Queens, an unexpected spectacle of lights unfolded, captivating the city of New York and causing a stir of excitement and curiosity. It all began with an electric jolt at the Con Edison plant on 20th Avenue and 32nd Street, triggering a mesmerizing display that locals quickly dubbed the Astoria Borealis. The burst of blue hues and flickering patterns lit up the sky, catching the attention of both social media enthusiasts and concerned citizens. Confusion then ensued as reports of explosions and power outages flooded emergency lines, leading to a surge of 911 calls and a flurry of online activity. However, the reality of the situation turned out to be far less dramatic than initially speculated. Con Edison clarified that an electrical fault in the voltage monitoring equipment led to a substantial arc flash, creating the stunning blue light that captivated people. While the incident sparked power outages across the city, it also inspired an array of humorous theories, including rumors of an alien invasion that Governor Cuomo was quick to dispel with a playful display of an alien mask. The resulting disruptions affected various parts of the city, from temporary ground stop at LaGuardia Airport to the interruptions on Rikers Island's steam production system, leading to a brief loss of heat and hot water. Even the Subway System 7 line in Queens experienced a momentary setback, highlighting the widespread impact of the incident on the city's infrastructure. While the exact duration of the electrical arc flash remained uncertain, Con Ed did pledge to conduct a thorough investigation into the root cause of the fault. New Yorkers are no stranger to wacky things, but the 2018 Astoria Borealis was really something else. The sky lighting up the way it did, as if science fiction was becoming reality, made for one interesting wake-up call. Number 4. Liang Star City Fifteen towering structures in Kunming, China met their dramatic end in 2023, as demolition crews employed controlled blasting to swiftly bring them down, all in a mere 45 seconds. The demolition of these high-rise residential buildings in the second phase of the ambitious Liyang Star City project marked an unprecedented event in Yunnan and a rare spectacle across China. Originally initiated in 2011, the Liyang Star City development was envisioned to encompass residential, commercial, and office spaces over a sprawling 340 acres. However, due to financial challenges, the project faced a prolonged halt, with only four high-rises delivered by 2015 out of the planned 19. Following a series of shifts in ownership and unsuccessful attempts to revive the venture, the project fell under the supervision of Yunnan Honghei Real Estate Company Limited. Yet confronted with structural deficiencies, including leaky basements, poor foundation conditions, and designs that didn't meet contemporary living standards, the decision to raise the unfinished buildings and reimagine the development was inevitable. The initial plans, boasting a mix of sizes, no longer aligned with modern housing preferences leaving the project ill-suited to current market trends. 
Additionally, issues with water seepage and compromised structural integrity stemming from years of neglect prompted the authorities to opt for a fresh start, with a revamped vision for Liang Star City Phase 2. Despite the bittersweet end of the high-rises, the new blueprint promises a revitalized approach. With a mix of low-rise and mid-rise structures thoughtfully crafted to harmonize with the contemporary housing needs and ensure a safer and more resilient future. But the fact still remains that these massive buildings sat unfinished for years, and it would have seemed that in the end, the best thing for them to do was to go away forever. Number 3. Walt Disney Concert Hall the Walt Disney Concert Hall in downtown Los Angeles may be a fun place to go, but it hasn't been exempt from its share of challenges and mistakes. Despite its iconic status as a cultural landmark and its acoustic brilliance, the Concert Hall has faced a series of issues that have garnered significant attention and posed obstacles to its operation. One of the foremost concerns that emerged early on was related to its distinctive exterior. The original stainless steel panels that adorned the building, designed by the renowned architect Frank Gehry, posed a unique problem. While they contributed to the concert hall's striking appearance, they also had the unintended consequence of reflecting sunlight with such intensity that neighboring buildings experienced significant temperature increases. This led to complaints from nearby residents and businesses, prompting the implementation of measures to mitigate this reflective glare and manage the building's impact on its surroundings. Despite the initial acclaim for its acoustical design, various factors such as the complex geometry of the building and the materials used in its construction posed some difficulties in achieving optimal sound quality. This prompted the need for extensive adjustments and renovations to fine-tune the acoustics, ensuring an enhanced auditory experience for both musicians and concertgoers. Moreover, the Walt Disney Concert Hall has faced operational and logistical hurdles. The management has grappled with the issues concerning the scheduling of performances, ticket sales, and audience engagement. Balancing the demands of a busy concert schedule, maintaining the hall's infrastructure, and providing a seamless experience for patrons have presented ongoing challenges for the administration. Financial concerns, too, have also loomed over the concert hall. The initial construction costs surpassed their projected budget, leading to a significant financial strain. This fiscal burden placed considerable pressure on the project's stakeholders, and it necessitated additional fundraising efforts. Despite all these challenges, the Walt Disney Concert Hall remains a cultural beacon and a symbol of architectural innovation. Its distinctive design and rich history continue to draw visitors and patrons from around the world, contributing to the vibrant arts and cultural scene in the heart of LA. With ongoing efforts to address its various issues and maintain its status as a world-class performance venue, this concert hall endeavors to uphold its legacy as a cornerstone of the city's cultural landscape. Number 2. Warped Train Tracks Instances of rail tracks melting are typically associated with extreme heat events where unusually high temperatures cause the metal tracks to expand and warp, leading to deformations and disruptions in rail services. Such occurrences can often happen during heat waves, especially in regions that don't frequently experience those extreme temperatures, leading to challenges for railway operators in maintaining the safety of their networks. One notable instance of rail tracks melting happened during the intense heat wave that affected parts of the Pacific Northwest in June of 2021. As temperatures soared to unprecedented levels, reaching well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the scorching heat caused significant disruption to various infrastructure, including railway systems. In Portland, Oregon, the extreme temperatures led to the warping and buckling of sections of light rail tracks, resulting in what looked like metal spaghetti down the road. Similarly, in the United Kingdom, instances of rail tracks buckling and warping due to the extreme heat have been reported during particularly hot summers. This phenomenon poses safety risks and operational challenges for railway authorities, necessitating prompt measures to address these structural damage. It looks as wild as it sounds, but when rail tracks are exposed to these prolonged high temperatures, the metal absorbs the heat, causing it to expand beyond its normal dimensions. As this metal expands, the tracks may buckle, warp, or develop kinks, posing safety risks. Additionally, the deformation can affect the alignment of the tracks, leading to disruptions in train schedules and service delays. In some cases, the deformation can be visually noticeable, with sections of the track appearing warped or bent due to the extreme heat. Railway authorities implement various measures to address the impact of heat on metal railroad tracks. One common method is to regularly monitor the track temperature using sensors embedded in the track or infrared technology. This allows authorities to detect any excessive heat buildup and take immediate action if necessary. Number 1. The 2014 Winter Olympics 
Leading up to the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, the athletes were pumped up and ready to go. Anticipation grew as they got their hotel keys, but everything changed when they walked inside. Some of the reported problems including incomplete hotel construction, poor sanitation, and substandard living conditions. These issues garnered significant media attention and sparked discussion about the readiness of the host city to accommodate the influx of athletes and tourists during the event. Rooms without doors, bathrooms with toilets sitting next to each other, unfinished walls, uh, the place was a nightmare. A Twitter account named Sochi Problems was created to share the mayhem and hijinks with the rest of the world. Some notable signs gave some of the do's and don'ts of the hotel toilets. The signs advised visitors to sit and use the toilet while discouraging them from standing, vomiting into the toilet, performing an upper decker into the toilet's tank, or going fishing in the toilet. Then there were the toilets that visitors could use but were forbidden to flush. Then there was all of the unfinished construction in Sochi, which journalists had no problem sharing on Sochi problems. Exposed wires in showers, open manholes, damaged curtain rods, and improvised shower curtains. These reports shed light on the challenges faced by the yet-to-be-completed hotels, with some reportedly lacking essential facilities such as lobbies, functional elevators, and even running water. Twin toilets became a pretty popular viral phenomenon. Then there was the problem of the courses. The women's downhill ski training runs faced delays right at the start of the Olympic competition, with only three racers taking the course on the first day. The officials deemed the conditions too perilous, citing an excessively large jump that propelled athletes to dangerous heights. Journalists even reported that the athletes were allegedly getting too much air, so much so that all-star Sean White pulled out of an event. I'll see you guys next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge. Thank you to our channel members.